appreciate them. Worship was great this morning. Um, it was awesome. And uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for allowing me to uh, speak into you guys. I have something that's been on my heart probably for months and months and months, but it hasn't been the right time. And this week, Lord's like, this is the week. So I'm very excited for it. But let's just pray. Father, we are excited for what you have. Because anytime it's from you, it's going to be beneficial to us. It's not always easy. It's not always uh, a joy sometimes because conviction isn't always easy. But Lord, you always, when you speak into us, it's for purpose and with, for a bigger vision than we have for ourselves, Lord. And we thank you for what you're going to do here this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Josh, real quick, I forgot to ask you to go into the kitchen, grab me a coffee cup. With no coffee. I don't need coffee, but I appreciate it. And I'll ask for it later. All right. So uh, I just forgot to do that earlier. So 12 years ago, I was at a, another church. I was at uh, a church plant in New Caney. Uh, they hired me on to start a youth program over there. And um, it was a small church. In fact, I was the only full-time staff, which was kind of interesting. Uh, but I was full-time with part-time pay, so you can figure out how that works. But, and that's just the life of ministry. I mean, you don't get into ministry. When the Lord calls you into ministry, it's not to be rich in any, by any means. Or, uh, but he does provide for you in every way. But you just get used to working paycheck to paycheck and that kind of stuff. But I was very much, of course, I was a single guy. I was renting a house uh, by myself. And so every little bit of money I went to was renting that house and, and just doing life. And I was very content with doing that. But uh, when you live that way, you're not used to having money in the checking account. And I think at that time, that week, one particular week, I had $100 in the bank account, which for me at that time was, I was a rich man. Uh, but then all of a sudden, the world happens and my Jeep started breaking down. I was driving an old Jeep Liberty at the time and my radiator was going out. And so I had two options. I had, uh, I could either fix it myself, which I'm not a mechanic by any means, or I put it in a shop, but I didn't have the money to put it in a shop because uh, radiators aren't cheap, first of all, and having someone else put it in and install it is not cheap at all. And so I did what any American would do, get on YouTube and figure it out. So I got on YouTube and, and looked it up and found a video of how to replace a radiator in an, I think it was an 03 Jeep Liberty. And I watched the video. I'm like, oh, I could do that. That's not a problem. And so I called uh, the local shop and I said, how much is a radiator for this? It was like 90 bucks and change. I'm like, well, I got a hundred bucks, so let's do this. So I went and got it and I, I changed it out and it, it actually worked. Shocking, right? Uh, and it was a pretty cool thing. And that's the reality is, is that's kind of our mentality these days. How many of you have fixed something or did something by watching a video on YouTube? Right? Wow. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, even this week, uh, I think my wife was embroidering a sweater and she's like, I just figured it out on YouTube. I'm like, oh, fantastic. Uh, but you can find almost anything on YouTube. I mean, let's, let's look through these. Uh, you want to know how to fix a, a, a leaky a faucet? They got videos on YouTube to do it. Anybody ever fixed a leaky faucet watching a YouTube video? Uh, what else? A fixed drywall. I mean, there you go. Have you ever had a fixed drywall? Yeah, you figure it out. YouTube. Uh, how to fix a chain on a bike or even, I guess, even a motorcycle. Uh, you can find a video on YouTube for it. Or how to fix a slice with a driver. All right. I don't know who put that in there. They know something about my life. Which is funny, as you can see going back, whoa, how to preach. Uh, you can go, you can see how I've actually watched that one. Anyways, uh, and then, yeah, you can find out how to preach on, on YouTube. Uh, still working on that part. But you can find just about anything on YouTube of how to fix things, how to do things. Uh, just a part of our generation now is to figure these things out. And the World Wide Web is so incredible for that information that we can figure all this kind of stuff out. We have access at our fingertips. And there's something special about figuring out how to fix something ourselves. Because things always break. Things always leak. Nothing runs perfectly. And I'm not just talking about Ken Rich's body. I'm just talking about in life, things go down, right? And there's always a need for solutions. You like that one? I just snuck that one in there just for you. Uh, there's always a need for solutions. So we have to learn to navigate the needs in our life. 
We have to learn to navigate, and this is not always an external thing. Uh, we're going to talk more internally. So if we look at the medical world and how it defines pain, there's two different ways that the medical world defines pain. One, acute pain, which is the short uh, event base, you cut, you cut your arm or you break your arm or these things that are short event base of things happen. And then there's chronic pain, which is this daily ongoing battle. I know my wife, for instance, she deals with migraines on a constant basis and it's ongoing. And that's what you would call a chronic pain. And then when you flip it around, there's two types of treatment in the medical world of how to deal with these things. You got your acute pain, which is a quick and temporary. So you break your arm, you get a cast. It's a quick fix, right? Uh, chronic pain is usually more of a process of uh, treatment. Like most doctors uh, actually will just give you higher doses of medication trying to figure out what's going to work for you. The process, right? Most of them have no idea what to do. That's just the reality of it. But, and that's how they deal with the medical field. Med medical field. The point is, as Christians, we struggle with the chronic battles of sin, which are long-term long struggles. But we try and resolve them with acute pain techniques. And what I mean by this is we use quick fixes because we are part of a YouTube generation. We try to deal with things that we've battled with, sin, struggles, battles with our life that are ongoing. But we try to do quick fixes rather than use long-term process of healing. Instead of dealing with certain pain, we just ignore it or medicate it. And I'm no longer talking about the medical side of things. We're talking about the sin. We're talking about the struggles, the battles in life. Uh, instead of dealing with things that we know are not good for us, we slap a Band-Aid on it and carry on. Right? We quick fix. And attempts at quick fixes to chronic conditions can sadly produce uh, deeper pain. It can produce deeper guilt, and sometimes it could, it could cause a lingering sense that we aren't doing enough to appease God because we just try to quick fix it. We, and when this stuff, it never gets fixed. It just resonates in our life. And quick fixes often cause more harm than good, and, and quick fixes often put the focus on a man-centered gospel of somehow further saving ourselves rather than resting and living in a God-centered gospel of what our God has already done and what Christ has done to save us. <clears throat> Can God heal you today? Absolutely. Can he resolve your problems today? Yes. But what if he doesn't? What if he wants us to learn something today that will help us overcome more tomorrow, right? Long term. What if he's trying to go through a process with you so that you can learn how to deal with, navigate these things that are going to affect you more long term? This is why we find James saying in James 1, very familiar, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. So this doesn't sound like a quick fix James is talking about. He's talking about a process that will eventually get us to a place of healing and also of learning. So, everyone say, it's a process. Y'all wake up, say it again. It's a process. But we go to these places looking for quick results, for quick answers. We verbally throw up on our friends and our family. We go to self-help books. We go to alcohol. We go to, uh, we medicate it. We go to food. And we Google how to overcome this today. And we keep scrolling until we find something that seems faster and quicker to handle the solution. Because that's how we've programmed ourselves. But the truth is that nobody wants, what nobody wants to admit is that YouTube won't fix it. So that's today's message today is YouTube won't fix it. So I want to talk to you about six things that YouTube will not fix in your life. And when I say YouTube, I'm really meaning quick fixes. There's no such thing as quick fixes to long-term issues. And so I believe uh, because of not necessarily because of a YouTube generation, just because this is the reality of it. But I believe we have program programmed our minds and hearts to deal with real and personal struggles with patchwork, quick fix. And so I want to talk to you about six things that YouTube will not fix. And we're going to get real, and we're going to get real fast. And I want to start a little broad and work our way in. So the first thing that I want to talk about is that YouTube won't fix your direction. 
YouTube will not fix your direction. Joseph, I'm not happy. I hate my job. My life is not where I want it to go or I thought it'd be going. And sometimes it keeps escalating from there. The direction in our lives sometimes, and most of the time, that we choose is the path of least resistance. And sometimes we do that because we feel, you know, this is genuinely the way that God wants us to go. And everything works out that direction. And it does work out that way sometimes. However, if we're honest, sometimes we take the path of least resistance because it's easier. Knowing it's not the best route for us, but we still choose it because it's easier. And it's a quick fix. When I first started driving 16... I think most of us can relate to this in here. Well, I'll say most of us. Uh, this was long before GPS, right? And looking back now, I mean, I don't know how I ever did it before GPS because I couldn't survive a world without GPS now. Uh, but I remember at 16, I didn't have that. We're still using paper maps. Have, have you guys, have you ever seen a paper map? No? Okay. Um, how many use paper maps? Yeah, all of us, a lot of us in here. Paper maps or... Uh, somebody telling us how to get somewhere. We've been there too, right? You go down the street about a mile, you take a ride at Penny's house, uh, go three humps down to the, to the rolling bush, take a left there, go another mile down there. When you see the four chickens, take a right and you're right there, right? It never worked for me because I always got lost with that. But that's just how it was then. And I thank God for GPS and Google Maps uh, because it's an easier way to not get lost. One of my pet peeves is, is uh, backtracking when I'm lost. I don't know, it just drives me insane. But thank God for GPS because I always got lost. And one of my greatest pet peeves, again, is circling back. But when it comes to the direction of your life, you can hear me on this, maybe we need to pick up David's attitude. Uh, we see a glimpse in David's life. Now, David was far from perfect. Everybody in the Bible other than Jesus himself was far from perfect. But David, he had this attitude, and you saw it in his uh, mentor, and you also saw it in his successor. But just a glimpse, Second Samuel 2, 1 says, After this, David inquired of the Lord, Shall I go up into any of the cities in Judah? And the and then it goes on, and then the Lord responds, and then he says, to which shall I go up? So there's this conversation that David would have with God about his direction. He was constantly going to the Father for direction. And this mentality works. I mean, for his mentors, from, for his successors, for constant people in the Bible that would constantly stay in tune with the Lord about the direction of their life, it just works. And again, this is just a glimpse of David. Did he still mess up? Yes. Did he still lose? Did he still try to quick fix things? Yes. We find this when he looked at Bathsheba and, and things escalated from there. He looked for those quick fixes, uh, but it didn't work. But then he find his way back. At some point, he recognized that his direction wasn't benefiting him or what God desired, and he changed his direction. It wasn't a quick fix. It was a process. The next thing, and I told you we're going to get a little real this morning, YouTube won't fix your marriage. Yeah. YouTube will not fix your marriage. There are no quick fixes to a healthy and God-blessed marriage. Creating a culture of love, honesty, unity, and God-honoring takes time to build. Even working on this process, we have to understand the reality that there is also no such thing as a perfect marriage. I think when you're young and you're falling in love, you have this image of this perfection. You're going to live on cloud nine for your whole life. You're going to drink joy juice, as Pastor always says. You're, going to, you're just going to be happy all the time. But the reality, it's a process and it takes time. There's only one couple in my whole life that I ever, I ever envisioned or I ever saw as pretty near perfect relationship, and that was my grandparents. They were together probably since they were 14, and my grandpa and grandma, they were always passionately in love with one another. Even up until she passed away, they treated each other like newlyweds. It was sickening. But, uh, but as, a, as a grandson looking at that, that was the goal right? You saw that perfect marriage. And um, even she got Alzheimer's and she had it for like 12 years and, and she got really bad toward the end. Like it happens. And he refused. I mean, he, and he had knee surgery. He could barely walk. And he refused to put her in a home. You, you've all seen the notebook. Well, that, that was my grandparents. The notebook was my grandparents to a T. That's just how they were, except they were together when they're 14. But the reality is, you know, 
when you see stuff like that, again, you just have this idea of, well, I want that. I want that perfection. I want that blessed marriage. I want, you know, honor God with it. And then we, we like get super discouraged when our marriage doesn't look like that. And then we start comparing it to one another's and we try to just quick fix everything, trying to get it to that path that it doesn't work and it just escalates our anger or frustration and all that stuff. But the reality of my grandparents is I observed that way down the road. I wasn't there when they first got married. I wasn't there when they built that process of that relationship. I'm sure it wasn't always like that. They built it. It takes a pro It's a process that God blesses, but to achieve it, it requires effort on our part, on both parts. Uh, we see this in Ephesians 5, 21 through 30. I'm going to read it quite a bit to you. Submit to one another of, uh, out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the household or the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, also, so also wives should submit to their husbands and everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. And it continues, but what you see in here is that God is comparing marriage to the relationship between Christ and the body. And it's a process. It's a process to do this. Why would he give us all these instructions if it doesn't require both on both parts to work at something? Like if he believed that there was a perfect marriage, then he would just say, just be. Right? No, he instructs us because he knows it's, at times it's going to be difficult. At times it's going to take a work. You can't just give up on it. You have to work out the process. Uh, this isn't plan a, this is not supposed to be a marriage seminar, but if your marriage is on the rocks or you're not communicating or you're not jailing, your marriage isn't as good as the relationship next to you, well, that doesn't necessarily mean that your marriage is doomed. That means that you have to work out this process of bettering your marriage, building a, the relationship, honoring God with it, working at this every single day. And when what you're doing isn't working, then you change things. Then you work this thing out. And then God promises us to be with us and help us in this if we both, both work on both sides at this thing. Uh, my wife and I, and I on the way up here, and I said I was going to use this example, but we were joking around. My wife, God bless her, she can't be on time to anything. But uh, and I'm one of those that have to be early everywhere. And so you can see how this has been for the last seven years of our marriage. Uh, in fact, the first time uh, she yelled at me was a week after we got married and we were on our way to church or we were getting ready for church and she was in the, in the bathroom and I'm in the living room dressed ready to go because it's 15 till we have to leave. And so I walk in there, 15 minutes, and then I walk out. Well, I meant 10 minutes. By the time I got to two minutes, it was over. <clears throat> she did not like me at that time. Uh, but it was the last time I ever did that, too, in seven years. Uh, now I just go in the hallway and just walk back and forth and, and let my, my feet say it all. Uh, does it work? No, it does not work. We're still late. But, uh, but we were talking on the way here, like, you know what? I love you, but sometimes I don't like you. And she's like, right back at you, babe. <laughs> I said, but that's, that's marriage. I mean, that's just how it is. We work at this thing. You work through it. It's a process. YouTube won't fix it. There's no quick fixes. It's going to take time. You can't just patch up your marriage and hope it's going to survive. you got to work at this thing. The next thing YouTube will not fix is your kids. Yeah, I told you, we're getting real here. There was a family... Uh, who really wanted to honor God with their, their household. So they decided, you know what? Uh, Penny and old Bob live right next door. Let's invite them to church or invite them to our home for a dinner. And so they invited, yeah, I said Penny. Uh, they invited them over and then they were getting ready to have dinner. And like, and so the mom wanted to really show off her household and her kids. So she asked her five-year-old son, Jimmy, to pray for the food. And so the son, or the son, little Jimmy, sitting there five years old, like, I don't want to do this in front of people. Like, you know, just how we all get when somebody asks us to pray out loud. And so Jimmy's like, I don't know, what do I say? And so the mom's like, just, just say what your dad said this morning for breakfast. He's like, 
okay. He bowed his head and he said, Lord, oh God, we have to have dinner with these awful people tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. YouTube won't fix that, right? Proverbs 22, 6 says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. You know, I've read that over and over many times, but it never caught on to me that it says when they're old. And when I, when I think about that, I think about there's never a time where the process of training ends, right? It doesn't matter if they're 20, if they're 16, if they're 8, if they're 40, if they're 50. It says when they get old, they'll find their way back, right? It won't depart from them. So your training process as a parent never has an expiration on it. You keep pouring into them. You keep loving them. You keep planting the truth in them, praying that when they get old, it will not depart from them. Training requires a process that does not have an expiration. You have to stay with it. We're, I mean, I know I'm very new. My wife and I are very new in training up our children, but we're working hard at it to honor God with our children. And even last week, last Sunday, we were at, uh, we ate out after church and we're sitting around. My dad was in town and uh, Nana and Grandpappy were there and we're sitting around this table. And then I look over and my daughter is on, her, on my wife's phone. And I'm like, and you, you don't think that's a big deal, but for me, that is a big deal. And, I, and, and so I told her, put it down, put the phone away. We're with family right now. It's important. And then, of course, she starts crying because that's what every six-year-old does. But, and then I brought her over. I said, listen, I'm not trying. I'm, this is not a punishment. I want to teach you to place value in our family. So when we're at a dinner table, when we're at home in the car, that's one thing. You can be on your phone or on the phone playing games, whatever. But when we're sitting at a table, I want to teach you now that to place value on the people around you in this moment. And so now it's easy to train her on that. When she becomes a teenager, I know it's going to be a lot harder. But if I instill this in her now, I'm going to pray that it's going to happen. Is it going to be perfect every time? No, we're not perfect. But it's a process to train up your child to honor him, to have a household that honors him. If you don't strive with your life to honor God, your kids will never do it. It's a process to develop that culture. The next one, I'm going to hide behind the pulpit because I don't want to talk about this one. All right. Y'all ready for this one? YouTube won't fix your health. We don't talk about this in church. And this is something I don't like talking about because it's a battle of mine right? YouTube will not fix your health. How do you expect God to take care of something that you don't care about? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that hurts, doesn't it? First Corinthians 6, 19 says, do you not know that your bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. This is a challenging thought because we don't like to think about this. I love food, right? I love cake. I love anything with sugar and bread involved, all of the above. Chocolate chip cookies, I'll eat 12 just sitting right here with no guilt, right? That's just the reality of it. But at some point, we have to realize this body right here, that it is a blessing from God. Not only that, but it encompasses the Holy Spirit. The driver of this body is the Holy Spirit, is of God. So I have to take care of this vehicle. I've got to take care of my health. We can't just have quick fixes. We can't just decide one day we're going to take vitamins that day and expect to live a long, healthy life. Right? It's a process. We can't, uh, and I'm going to say this, we can't do things with the body over and over and over and then get shocked when we struggle with it later. Right? And we do every day, and it's, just, it's a battle. I understand that, and it's always going to be a battle because it's the easiest thing to do without feeling guilt because we're so used to it. But it's a process to take care of it. You have to recognize if you want. I mean, we don't know when we're going. We don't know how we're going to go or whatever, and I'm not saying you need to join a gym or uh, you know, eat vegetables the rest of your life. I'm just saying you need to be aware that you encompass the Lord. And you want to give them your best, and that involves your body, your health. That involves. I mean, so I do work out. I go to Planet Fitness. I don't like that gym, but it's convenient. Um, I don't like anything about it, but it's convenient. So I go because uh, it's right there. But so I have a excuse me. I have a 
a black card. If you know what Planet Fit is, there's a black card, and you, they have this room that has all kinds of different things that you can have as a black card, or you can just pay, just go to the gym. Well, the black card they have they have like massage chairs, they have hydra massage, whatever that it's like water pressure. I don't know. Uh, they have tanning beds. They have, uh, and then they have this one machine called a. It's like a full total body enhancement. And so I was finished my workout one day, and I'm like. I wonder what that is. So I went out there like, I want to give me a session for the total body enhancement, just out of curiosity. They're like, okay, it's 12 minutes long. I'm like, okay, I got time. So I go in this room and it's a coffin pretty much standing like this, but uh, that's what it looks like. And then dress down in my skivvies, you get in there, you push the button, and all of a sudden a bunch of red lights come on. And so it's, it's like red light therapy. Somebody could probably educate you a lot more than I can. But it's supposed to help your skin, help circulation, different things. I'm like, Try it. I don't know. Uh, so I'm standing there, and it's like 12 minutes, like one minute into it, you're also standing, and I didn't realize this, you're standing on this little oval, and all of a sudden it just starts shaking. And it shakes your body, and it's supposed to help tone your muscles and circulate things. And I'm sitting there shaking with red lights, and I'm looking around, and I'm like, this is not going to fix this. this I don't, like, what am I doing with myself right now? I'm like, I got things shaking on my body that should not shake. And I'm, I'm like, this, I'm going to walk out with a six-pack? What am I expecting here? I'm like, I don't know. What, what am I doing right now? There's got to be a video in here watching this, and they're going to send it to somebody. I don't know. But I just remember sitting, looking down and watching my belly shake like, that's not going to fix that. That's not. There's no quick fixes to your health. There really isn't. It's a process. It's an annoying process at times, especially if you want to lose weight or you want to get healthy, but it's a process that's worthy of God's blessing us, right? It's worthy to give God our best, even in our body. And that might con be consistent of taking things out of your life that you know aren't good for you. But again, it's honoring, your you're honoring God with everything he has blessed you with. And the next thing YouTube will not fix is your attitude. I told you, we're getting real. Negativity, anger, the victim mentality, never seeing or saying anything positive in life. All these things will poison your day. They will poison your week. They will poison your month. They will poison your life. And no one else is to blame for it than you. And that's a hard reality. We can sit here and blame people around us. We can blame our spouses. We can blame uh, our work situation. But they have no control over your attitude. You do. You have no control of what others say, or what others do, but you have control on how you embrace the negativity and how you respond to it, right? Romans 5, 45, 4 and 5, for everyone that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through the endurance taught in the scripture and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had. He has given you the ability to have a better attitude, but it's up to you to embrace it, right? You can be a half empty or a half empty kind of person and, and do life that way. And I know a lot of people that way, or you can strive to shift yourself and have a better attitude, but it's up to you on how we deal with that. You can't fix that quickly. It's a process. You got to start changing the way you think and, and process these things. You've got to take things out of your life or maybe even people out of your life that constantly affects your attitude. It's a process. You can't put a Band-Aid on and expect to be better tomorrow. And then the last thing, I've got to roll through this. The last thing YouTube will not fix is your heart. Thank you. That was like perfect timing. Your heart. Over 95 times the Bible brings up the heart. Over 95 times. Above all else, guard your heart, Proverbs. The heart is deceitful, Jeremiah. Create me a pure heart, Psalms 51. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart, 1 Samuel. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart, Proverbs. The heart is the ultimate foundation of our joy, of our peace, of our love, but it's also the ultimate foundation of our sins, our problems, our struggles. It should be the first place we should go when diagnosing our struggles, right? Is our heart. 
My heart is empty. My heart is broken. My heart is numb. There's no quick fixes to the heart, but there is a process to shift it to something more valuable. For where your treasure is, your heart will be also. Matthew. So all of these things, all six of these things, we want to fix all these things because for some reason we believe one day we will live in this fairy tale land where everything is perfect. We, we expect everything to be perfect. We, we expect to live in a world where everything is going to line up just right and we're going to be happy the rest of life. And then we're miserable until we think we get to that place. And we search for it over and over and over, and we never get to that place. This is why all six of these things, we try to quick, we quick, try to quick fix them. We try to put patches on them because we think that we're going to live in a perfect world, and it doesn't exist. We spend our whole lives on this journey looking for the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, and we push people out of the side, push them to the side, ruin relationships. We fill all of our time with chasing this idea, neglecting your heart and your body, because if we finally obtain it, we'll one day be rich, we'll be happy, we'll grow tent. Uh, at peace, fully satisfied, live in a perfect world. And then like Solomon, one day we're going to look back and we're going to realize that we chased all of that for nothing because it was never about the pot of gold. It was always about the journey and the people in front of us and the God with us. But we missed out because we were always chasing a myth. You know what a myth is? A myth is a widely held but false belief or idea. And that's what this is. When we try to chase perfection, we're chasing a myth because we're never going to obtain it. But we can have so much joy in the people around us and, and the joy of, of what the Lord has in front of us and the process to gain all the riches and the blessings that he gives us. It's a process. So getting back to the original, if we're trying to fix what's broken, then we have to realize that chronic pain requires chronic treatment, right? Long-term pain requires long-term process. It's going to be more than a quick fix. So I'm going to skip this first. I'm just going to give you three things real quick, and then I'm going to start closing up. The first treatment is trust. The first treatment in, in uh, solving these things or the process is trust. We trust doctors, we trust mechanics, we trust Amazon with our precious packages, right? We trust the professionals, but we ultimately have a hard time trusting God to help us or give us wisdom or even solutions to our ultimate battles. We have a hard time with that. As soon as we don't receive a response, we move on to the, these quick fixes, essentially trusting ourselves more than God. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise. Maybe we're a little too slow in waiting, right? Maybe God is holding on to the answer you're looking for to see if you're going to trust him. Maybe it's right on the other side of you giving up on those, those quick fixes, right? Why would he ever give you something valuable like a solution if you don't trust him? And he has it. He has a process for you. He has a solution. He has it all for you. You just have to trust him. The second treatment is time. Beautiful things take time. Look at these things. The first one. Y'all know what that is? Right? Eiffel Tower. Took two years to build that thing. Two years. Look at the next one. This is the Sydney Opera House in Australia. Beautiful. Beautiful place. It took them 14 years to build that. What about that? The Taj Mahal. Anybody want to guess? Close. 20 years. 20 years to build that. Beautiful. What about this? Yeah, 70 years, roughly, to build that. And they didn't have machines then either. So 70 years. All these beautiful things, these things that we find valuable, took time to build. Anything of value takes time, right? Even, we, even our meals, right? You go to McDonald's, get something quick. I wouldn't call that valuable. Delicious, maybe. But most things that we deem valuable and that we pay for take time, right? You want a good steak? You're not going to go through a drive through for that. It's going to take time. So we have to understand that God's going, he sees us as valuable. He sees your burdens and your struggles as valuable because it's valuable to you. And so it's going to take time to help develop that process to overcome. It's not going to happen overnight. 
You're going to have to trust him. And then the third thing is a transformation of your thoughts. The best medicine for chronic pain is not a quick fix, pain masking kind, but rather a method that we call cognitive behavioral therapy. I know that's fancy. It's simply this. It means that if you change or if you think or if, let me say this, let me read, just read this. This means that what you think changes what you do, which will eventually change how you feel. So it begins with changing your thought process. And it's not a quick fix. It's a lifestyle of engaging your pain in a way that makes it a part of a bigger purpose of your life and not the whole of your life. It's a process of being intentional with how you think about your pain that will change how you feel in love. The medical world is confirming this because we see this. Uh, Paul talks about this in Colossians. If, you, if then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of, or, uh, right hand of God, set your mind on things that are above and not on things of earth. You have to change the way you think about things. Right? If you want to find a process of overcoming these struggles in your life, then we have to first shift our thought process. Like Rather than the world is caving in on us, maybe God's trying to show us something of how we're going to overcome this. How we're going to, maybe your marriage is on rocks. Maybe, maybe shift your process. Like, okay, when the Lord gets us through this, we're going to have the ultimate testimony to help marriages all around us. I mean, you don't know, right? You have to shift the way we, we, we see things. Um, Marley, you can go ahead and go up. Give me that cup. I don't need the lid. Thanks. All right, here's the reality. This is how I think about this. If this is our life, and this is the posture of our life, look where the largest opening is facing up, just like with Paul right here. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things of earth. So we're constantly living like this, then the Lord is pouring into us constantly. He's filling our cup. And we constantly let him fill our cup. And the Lord's blessing us with wisdom on how to handle the solutions and the problems of our life. And he's pouring into us because our posture is right. Our minds are set on things above. And then what happens is that we take these blessings and we start pouring them on these different situations. We start pouring them on our direct. We start, so when God pours into us, we start pouring these blessings onto our direction in our life or on our marriage or on our kids, right? On our attitude, our health, our heart. And we start pouring his, his blessings and his knowledge and his wealth source on all these things. But the issue is, because we're quick fixes, we pour, on, pour out and we change our posture and we start living like this, rather. And what happens with that is no longer are we setting our minds on things above, we're setting our minds on things that are around us. And so when we pour out all of our stuff and then all this negativity is over here, then we're swallowing all this negativity. And then we take all of the worldly things of how we handle solutions because no longer are we a part of our process. We're a quick fix. And so we take in all that negativity and we turn around and we face our marriage and we just throw up all that negativity on our marriage. And then all that's going awry and you're taking all that in and then you turn toward your kids and you're not angry with them, but they did something and, and because you're already angry over here, you just throw up all over them and you take it out on your kids. Or you take all that in, nothing's working, my direction, my life's nowhere, my, my marriage is on the rocks, and then my kids are going crazy right now. And then you turn toward your health and you just let it all go because you're throwing all that stuff up on your health. Right? We've all done it. We can all relate to that because it's a process. We're living with a quick fix rather than setting our mind on things above. And then God will pour into that and then we'll pour that onto our stuff. But it's a constant shifting ourselves our minds we pour out onto our kids we shift our minds we pour out onto our marriage we shift our minds we pour out onto our health and it's a process to do these things and then you realize that god's honoring all of these different areas of your life because you're shifting your posture we can't always live like this it's not good for us it was never meant for us to live that way god has all these blessings and all these things to show us and we but we're not open to it because we haven't shifted our posture toward him. 
It's just bouncing off our side. He's throwing stuff at us, but we're not taking it all in because we're so consumed by the things around us and we're focused on all these things. And then and before we know it, we let everything go and we're in a place that we never wanted to be in the first place. But you know what? We can still get back there. You just have to shift yourself. It's never too late. You just have to shift yourself. So I want to just pray for us. It's that simple. That God will help us begin this process. This process of healing. This process of uh, wisdom, of resources. This process of getting in line with what he has for you. To shift our heart and our mind. Again, go back. I have it here somewhere. Set our mind on things that are above and not on things of the earth. So just, just close your eyes for a second. If anybody, any of you relate to anything said today, would you just raise your hand? Hands everywhere. Thank you. You can put them down. I want to pray four separate prayers. I know that sounds like a lot, but listen, prayer is never a lot. So I'll just say that. I want to pray on four different situations. And let me just first start here with your thoughts. If this relates to you, if you, if you just have a negative attitude or, or your thought process right now is just driving you crazy, you're having a hard time setting your mind right, uh, would you just raise your hand? If you're just struggling with that right now, thank you. Hands all over the room. Let me pray for you first. Father, not just for the hands around the room, Father, but I pray for all of us. I pray that you would transform our thoughts. I pray that you will teach us how to change our thinking. Lord, there's no quick fix. We're not just going to walk out of here and we're just going to think positively. It's not work like that. But Lord, help us and teach us how to shift our thoughts. How to focus our mind on things that are above. And through that process, have a better outlook on life, how to have a better vision of our direction in life, or our, 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 our marriage, our kids, all these different things. Shift our thinking, Lord. The next person I want to pray for, is there somebody in here that you are just, you are in need of some kind of healing? And I don't just mean like, physical. And if that's the case, that's great. I'll pray for you too. But maybe like a mental healing. You just feel like you've been beat up. You feel like you have no solutions. You just feel like you're stuck in a hole. Is there anybody in here like that? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your honesty. Father, I pray for this group. I pray for a complete healing. I pray, Father, that you would help them discover the process of healing and changing on your timeline. Lord, help us understand that it's your timeline. Help, forgive us for constantly trying to quick fix things. And Lord, let us be in your timeline. Father, and I pray for a healing, whether that be physically, mentally, spiritually. You know what it is, Father, but I pray that, that you would heal and I pray that you would help us discover a process for constant healing. The third third group I want to pray for is that you're just having a hard time trusting the Lord. Like you know that he has something good for you, but you keep trying to fix things yourself. You keep trying to handle things yourself. And all while he just wants you to trust him. Anybody in here like that? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Father, I just pray for trust. Lord, I pray that you would change our heart, that we would, that we would start every morning on our hands and knees, Lord, recognizing that you're God and we're not, that you have the solution that we don't, Father, that your way is better and our way isn't, Father, that you are the way, our way isn't the way, you are the way, Father. And I pray that you give us an ability to trust you, Lord, and recognize that you're not going to fix things overnight because why you place value on our life. We are worth way more than a temporary quick fix, Father. And you have so much more for us. Lord, just allow us to trust you and wait it out in your time. And then give us revelation on how to develop these processes. Lord, help give us clarity on these things, Father, so that we know they are of you. And then give us the courage to walk through. Give us the boldness to walk through. Lord, you have so much for us, Lord. We have to trust you in that. And then we have to walk through the door when you give us the answer. 
And I thank you in advance for what you're going to do in that, Lord. And the last group I want to pray for is that you've been dealing with something for so long. You have what we're calling a chronic struggle. Yet you've been patching it up for so long that you're almost numb to it now. Like you're just so used to the pain, you're so used to dealing with it that you just don't even pay attention to it anymore. They, that it's there right there with you that you just keep layering and layering and layering and you just become numb to it. But you're like, no, today I need to, I need to open that wound up so that it can heal. Is that anybody in here? Thank you. Father God, you know. Lord, I pray for these hands, but also pray for those hands that didn't go up because we're so numb to it, we don't even realize it anymore. Because there's things in our life that we've, we've just put band-aids over and that we just ignore that they are not beneficial for us. There's things in our life that aren't good for us. There's sins in our life that we've done for so long that we convince ourselves that it's the normal. Lord, reveal those things, Lord so that we can clear these band-aids, that we can start the process of healing, so that we can set our minds to things that are above, and that you can overcome these things for us, Lord. I pray for all these people in this room, all the people watching on YouTube or Facebook right now. Lord, I just pray for a healing. I pray for uh, that you would do something mighty in their lives, Father. But I pray it wouldn't just be a one and done thing, Father, that it would be a process of them living for you. And Lord, when you pull, when they pull those band-aids off and when it's uncomfortable and, and it doesn't feel good, Father, I pray that you give them a peace in their heart knowing that you're handling it. Father, help us be overcomers. You've given us the ability to be this way. You've given us the ability to, to look and deal with these things, Father. You've given us uh, the true source of solutions, the treatment, the real treatment. Lord, help us trust you I trust your timing and shifting our, our thought process. And I pray that you would do something in the body of the lives of the people in this room because you're in control, Father. Thank you for the revelation of today. This isn't a bit of, bit about a big, powerful message. This is about revealing things in our life that are no longer working for us. And so that we can begin a process of healing and begin a process of not surviving this world, but thriving in this world. You didn't give us a power to be timid. You gave us the power to overcome and to thrive, Father. And I pray that you begin to do something mighty in the people in this room, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's celebrate him this morning. Come on. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. I pray that it res resonates with you guys. And I pray that you also would begin that process. Don't constantly pour out and live there constantly go to the father and set your mind on things above because he's going to show you things that you've never seen for your life he's going to show you a whole new life a whole new direction that you didn't even know existed he's going to show you abilities that you didn't even know you had because you've been so consumed on the things around you because god's good that way I wouldn't be up here if that weren't true. The people who are serving in this church would not be where they are if that weren't true. And then we wouldn't have salvation if that weren't true as well. Um, appreciate you guys. We'll have our servant leaders come forward. Uh, there are tithe and offering envelopes right in front of you on the booth. Uh, if you'd like to grab one, uh, you can also give online at holywild.net slash give. Uh, and do different things like that. We have all kinds of resources for you to be able to honor God with your giving. And we just want to do that. As we give today, we we'll believe in God for jobs and better jobs, more money, less hours, benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates to return, debts demolished, royalties received, favor, and success to the kingdom. Y'all give it up for Josh. Yeah.